Welcome, everyone. I prepared the presentation. Okay, I didn't prepare the presentation, actually. I made a game because it's more fun to talk about games while you play a game, right? And we had a whole bunch of really hardcore technical talks yesterday and today morning. So just like, treat it like a break for your brain or something like that. And there is one issue. Uh, I made a game on the OYA console, and I just received it yesterday, okay, two days ago. So it's not really stable, so please be patient just in case something will happen. And yeah, so let's try. <laughs> nice loading bar. Yay. So uh, let me, okay, I have my cheat sheet somewhere, I'm sorry. Because I don't remember the special codes I need to type in this game, okay. Uh, so let me introduce myself first. My name is Michał Budzyński. I'm a JavaScript developer from Poland uh, in Central Europe. I currently live in Paris. And uh, I work for Mozilla in Firefox OS team. Uh, you know what Firefox OS is? Anyone? OK, like three persons. Yeah, nice. So that's the new operating system made by Mozilla, and it's kind of web-based. We have a great uh, booth with our community members in the cafeteria. They have some devices, so just if you have some free time or you're just curious on what's, how it looks like, just go there and try. Uh, yep. Yeah, so Mozilla is the... Oh, Microsoft is one of the sponsors today, so I will just leave this side. Uh, uh, by the way, thank you, Microsoft guys, for the winter caps. Like, I heard that tomorrow it will be around 22, so it will be really useful. Uh, so I also organized those conferences. On Game Start is HTML5 gaming event, uh, the first one in the world, and so far the biggest one. We had three editions in Poland. Uh, one edition in New York er earlier this year, blah, 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 on GameStar.com. And I work also on this project called AntarcticJS, and it's, maybe it's hard to, uh, like, uh, get this from the name, but that's the JavaScript conference on Antarctica. And I've been there last year, check the venue, and yeah, follow AntarcticJS on Twitter for more info. I hope it will take place next year, around Antarctic summer. And I'm also addicted to TV shows. I watch shit tons of crappy TV shows all the time. I have my GitHub repository with a list. So, so far since, two <laughs> since 2010, I watched more than 4,000 episodes, and that's more than 2,000 hours. And if you, if you will go there, and see that there is uh, one show that you know and it's good and I don't have it on the list. Just fork the repo and send me a pull request. Please. I'm not kidding, really. <laughs> okay, so as I said, I didn't make a game. I made, I mean, didn't make any sla... Okay, you haven't seen that. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't really, as I said, that's not really stable thing. Okay, so here we are again. So the game is more or less about... <laughs> is Thomas somewhere here? Can I switch to my computer? Because I don't think it want to cooperate today. Uh, okay. So, uh, so oh, one more thing. Uh, even if I'm a game developer, I'm not really a good player. So I suck at gaming, and like playing and talking in the same time, it's impossible for me. So I will probably, <laughs> yeah. I improved the spot. 
I improved the respawn algorithm recently, so it should work better. Okay, so the game is like, I just traveled through the, oh, it's actually just slightly changed uh, site of On Game Start 2012. And you control this astronaut inside the spaceship with lasers and talk to people. These yellowish things are kind of people. Okay, so uh, I will talk today about uh, game consoles and browsers and games. So uh, first time I get interest in, like I get an idea that maybe it's possible to, okay, that the idea of running HTML or any even JavaScript on the game console uh, is kind of new thing. We, I mean, we have JavaScript in like almost everywhere, like in the server side, mobile phones, fridge, printers, whatever, right? So why not on the game console? And uh, the first attempt uh, to do that I ever seen was running JavaScript games on Xbox. So Xbox has, has this thing called XNA. Uh, so you can basically run your own game written in .NET and XNA framework on uh, Xbox 3060. And there is this small thing called uh, Jurassic. And it's, whoa, no, no, no. Yes. There is this uh, thing called uh, Jurassic, and that's a JavaScript engine for .NET. So there is this guy that made an Impact.js uh, game engine, Dominic Shablevsky. Uh, and he made the first attempt to run his own game on uh, Xbox. So basically what he did was, okay, yeah. Uh, what he did was cross-compiling JavaScript to the .NET bytecode and then run it on XNA. And he has outstanding uh, performance of six seconds per frame. So <laughs> that's not actually what we want to achieve in games. And... Uh, Okay, okay, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but as you could see for 30 seconds, <laughs> it's possible to run JavaScript game on the OYA console. So OYA is this small, cheap, not cheap, inexpensive device uh, that run Android. So you can run your Android games on this game console. And there is this cross compiler called Cocoon.js. Uh, it's made by the, some startup from Spain. I mean, there are now startups from Silicon Valley. It always happens with European startups after a while. And they, uh, so it's really easy. I mean, everything you need, oh, I don't have it. But so you need to believe me that everything you need to do is just write your game like you do for uh, the browser, uh, compress it to one zip file, upload it to Cocoon.js uh, cloud server service, and then download the APK file for Android. And it kind of works, as you could see. I have no idea why it worked for 30 seconds. I, I really, it worked in my room on my TV. Anyway, so that was uh, quite like. Uh, new thing that, but why actually we want to do that? Like how far is our console from our mobile phone? Like what's the difference today? I mean, okay, the difference is obvious, right? You no one has, you, you don't like walk with your PlayStation in your backpack like all, most of the time and you don't play it in subway. But uh, f from the hardware point of view, like PS2 uh, was five, no, three times worse device than ZT Open, the cheapest Firefox OS phone now. So when, when, I, when I saw this thing, I thought, okay, so why mobile phones are not our game consoles now, right? Simple idea. 
So, oh, I forgot one slide. Because we talked about how to run our JavaScript things on the uh, console, and what about running console games in the browser? So, oh, this, a lot of things doesn't work today. But you, so there is, uh, how many of you ever heard of mscripten? Okay, so mscripten is LVVM to JavaScript compiler. So you can compile your uh, C code or Python code or whatever code to JavaScript and run it in the browser. And we have this subset of JavaScript called uh, ASM.js. So it's, it's low-level JavaScript with memory management and things like that. So recently, we created this demo uh, of the Unreal Engine in uh, HTML in JavaScript. It's rendered using WebGL, uh, and it was written in C, so as far as I know. <laughs> and it's kind of, yes. So you can walk, look around, and all this shit, like in a real game, blah, blah, blah. OK, nice. So, uh, so what's the other important difference between the browser and the mobile phone? So for me, like the game changer is the, uh, support of all the web APIs we do have now, mostly in Firefox OS, but while, when they will became part of the standard, we will have them in all the mobile browsers, and not only mobile browsers, also desktop browsers as well. So what exactly? Like, <sighs> OK, give me a second. If I want to create a game for the conference next time, please punch me in the face. <laughs> OK, so we have, uh, using web APIs, we have, the main advantage for me is that we have different ways to uh, manage to handle the input, player input. So on your gaming console, you just have your joypad, and that's all. Like, or this ridiculous Kinect thing, if you are too lazy to do jogging in real life, you can run in the front of your TV, right? But in the browser, we have like the unlimited actually ways of handling the input. So probably all of you know accelerometer, right? Like we can use accelerometer from uh, our mob, uh, browsers. So like user don't need to use a keyboard, mouse, or touch events to control your game. It just tilt the phone and that's all. I mean, yeah, it was a big thing. Uh, when it was invented. Now it's not really original, but yeah, let's. That's the first thing. So, what about geolocation? So, geolocation is uh, more or less the GPS API in your browser, and there is a whole bunch of games that use them, like, I don't know, that's one of the game in where you need to run to, to the particular place faster than your friends. Or uh, Tour Force is, is quite nice. It's like a gangster game, but in real life, it doesn't sound very good. It's <laughs> in the real environment. Oh, you get the idea. So, uh, and also, like one of my favorites, but I couldn't find it, is. Uh, there was a hackathon in Warsaw a couple of years ago, and one of the like 48 hours to build an HTML5 game, and one of the team builds a geolocation paint application. So you just run with your phone, and then you could see like your drawing on the map. It was kind of fun. Okay, sorry because I have no idea where my next slide is. Uh -huh, okay, upper platform. Oh, no, actually, no. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, wait. Okay. Yay. So we have the GamePad API as well. So you can control your game with a GamePad. So that's boring. That's not really uh, something you want to do on the browser because we have consoles for that. But if you write HTML5 game for the OEA console, for example, you can run it in, uh, uh, you, you can, you need to implement the, the GamePad API there. And the API actually, like, it's, it's the, if you want to teach your kids how not to uh, create the architecture of an API, just show them the W3C documents about the uh, GamePad API, because it's like the worst API ever. We don't have events there, but you need to pull on every frame to huge uh, array of buttons and check if the button is zero or one. That makes no sense at all. Yep. So, which one is the next? Oh, I. I hate this part. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Okay. So, what about get user media? Uh, so, there is this thing in the browser called uh, WebRTC, and part of WebRTC is get user. So, WebRTC was created to create Skype-like. Uh, applications inside the browser, so you have peer-to-peer -peer connection, and part of this uh, API is the get user media. It's access to your uh, video and audio of the browser. So, how many of you seen my talk from last year? Okay, like five people. Great. So it will be fun. So. Uh, I create the really simple example of uh, how get user media works. So that's the video part. Those are just the puzzles. Like you just need to grab one and put grab one and grab <laughs> one and put in the proper place. If you don't know where to put it, you can cheat. Like okay, my hand is in here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hop. Voila. Yeah. So that's the simple example of how video can, I mean, that's not really useful example, but you get the idea, right? And uh, so how we can, <sighs> that's the hardest part of this level. I hate it, but. Uh -huh. How we can, okay, it's nice that we can access the, the uh, video, but how we can actually use it. So my idea from last year, I had a talk about the face recognition, and I created simple uh, example of, so first of all, what happens in the first step is just we draw the stream from the camera on canvas and run the face detection algorithm there. And when the face is detected, we stop. Like. Yeah. That's the first step. Uh, so the second one was uh, we have a texture of the 3D model from the WebGL game. And then when we detect the face, we put the face on the texture in the place where the face should be. So in this, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so now we have a texture uh, with our own character. And the, second, the third step, of course, is uh, to put this uh, face on the real model. And so the algorithm detects where the eyes are and put them in the gla into the glasses, where the nose is and mouth and things like that. So we have our own 3D model and we can use it in games or whatever. Uh, yep. So that was one of the use cases, one of the things where you can use the 
Uh, yeah, so, but if we can find a face in a video, can we use our heads as game controllers? And I had an example last year, and I think it worked, but this year I couldn't make it run. I don't know why. Uh, there is this game hook called Head Pong. Uh, oh yeah, that's this. And I'm not, yeah, exactly. It doesn't really work, but what uh, happens there is you play a Pong game with your head. That's quite kind of stupid, but it's possible, so why not? And uh, like the project I started last year, and I'm not working on it anymore, uh, was quite controversial. Uh, so if we can detect our own face on the video, can we detect the face of the animal? And there is this library called KittyDar, I showed it last year, that you just put the cat's uh, photo there and it starts looking for it and voila. So we created together with my friend a prototype of a game that you control with your cat. Uh, but, I mean, it was quite fun for us. It wasn't as fun for the cat because, oh, I will not say why, but anyway, you need to trust me. <laughs> yeah, so where is the next slide? There. Uh, I mean, the, the game wasn't really uh, playable. There is, is, it, is there even a word? Anyway, uh, because the algorithm is really slow. So you need like a second for a frame. So that's not really uh, funny. But Get User Media is not only the video, as I said before. It's also, and people usually forget about it, it's also about audio. So you can access your microphone as well, not only the camera. And so is it possible to write a game that you control with a microphone? I mean, of course it is, everything's possible, right? But let's try. <laughs> so first of all, I need to, whoa, no, 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 no. Whoops, sorry. Uh, Okay, so uh, first of all, I need to do a little calibration. So please be quiet for a second, okay? Okay, and now on three, can you all shout like really loud? One, two, three. Okay. So, uh, I stole one of the open source games, uh, example of the uh, uh, Impact uh, JS engine, and I wrote my own plugin that like, blocks the uh, keyboard control, and the character is always running, and it jumps when you scream. <laughs> so, shh, let's try. Okay, enough. You get the idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, 
So we have other web APIs as well, like FM radio API, battery API, light sensor API. And can we do a game controlled by the battery status? Actually, we can. We can. Uh, I, it's not really a smart thing, but uh, there was the guy like almost 100 years ago called uh, Greg Mallory, and he was the first guy that uh, probably uh, at attempted the peak of Mount Everest, but he died when he was getting back or going there, so we don't know. But like three years before he got there, someone asked him, man, why do you want to do that? And he was like, because it's there. So uh, I like, of course, we don't need to use those APIs for our games, but they are there. Why not? And I actually don't have a demo. I, I'm, it's a pity. But in Firefox OS, uh, in Firefox, uh, okay. So in Firefox OS uh, Simulator, when you uh, plug and unplug your charger or your USB cable on the phone, it triggers an event. So it's really easy to create a game, like to, to change the game I did with a microphone for the battery status API. So the character starts when you plug or unplug your phone. I mean, it makes no sense, but why not? You cannot do that with your console, right? <laughs> and where's next? Oh my god, there. Yeah, so there is this guy, Sevat Yerli, or something like that. He's the CEO of the company called Crytek. That's like the biggest gaming company uh, in the world, or one of the biggest. They, sorry, they create the big titles like Far Cry or or something else. <laughs> And uh, he said in, the, in an interview last year that the next console generation will be the last. And it's mostly uh, because we, have, we don't have so many hardcore gamers now, like regular gamer uh, for, for now, for this time, is uh, women in late 30s. Should I stop already or? Okay. And playing like twice a day with her mobile phone. And another thing really important is that we have how many? Seven billion people in the world? Something around that. And we have 10 billion phones and only 4 billion toothbrushes. So mobile phone, like mobile industry is getting bigger and bigger. And the next generation of the, cons of the next console generation will be just in our pocket, because why not? Like, and for the last thing I want to say, it's thank you. That was all, actually. 